Does it smell uh, like gas to you? Yes. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, you'll likely hear my dogs bark. Why is that, you ask? Because we're moving them to a more delayed feeding schedule. Twice a day rather than three times a day. It's because they became big sausages and they had health issues. So my apologies for the barking. The OGs will be used to it, but they're pissed. They're really pissed. Anyways, we're going to teach you tonight how to make bourbon chicken. AKA something you might have had at the mall or in John's case, a festival. Bourbon chicken was requested by Logan Robinson. And from the best of my search ability, nobody else. Logan requested this four years ago, and once more again, three years ago. And he recently commented on one of our recent videos, recently, that I am a man of my word. He was very happy that I made another request of his, but I didn't, I didn't give him a shout out. I felt bad about it. I'm bad at the shout outs today. My brain is, f is full of holes like Swiss cheese. Hey Vinny, could you, could you, could you stop? Could you stop? Vinny, can you sit? Good boy. Hey, can you sit? Sit. Good boy. Now sit and wait. Stop prancing. And so, this episode is dedicated to Logan Robinson, and I remember to acknowledge you. Thank you for your patience and your viewership. Sorry I didn't give you a shout out in the other videos. But yeah, brains full of holes, let's begin. All right, you will need... Oh, uh, this dish is called bourbon chicken because apparently it was invented by a Chinese cook who was cooking on Bourbon Street, you know, in Louisiana. I don't know if that's true. Vinny, you stop it. I'm gonna pick you up. You didn't want it, but now you got it. You're my baby. A lot of uh, the recipes don't have bourbon in them, uh, but because we are us, I, I picked one that has bourbon in it. So yeah, there you go. All right, so get yourself a beverage. This is an alcoholic beverage. It's not bourbon. I've realized in my advanced age, advancing age, I suppose, that if I have two or more bourbon drinks in a night, I feel bad the next day. And I, I assume that is the first of many pins that will drop as I, you know, get older and I'm like, ah, I can't drink that no more, and I can't drink that no more, and soon I'll be a fuddy-duddy that's no fun at all. But, so far, I can drink just about anything else and it's fine. But two or more bourbon drinks and I, I get a headache, so... I have one bourbon drink in the spirit of bourbon chicken. But in the meantime, I'll just kick back the box. All right, so in a bowl, we're gonna do a little bit of prep because it's actually a pretty fast dish to make and uh, kind of comes together quick. So you'll wanna, you'll wanna make the sauce ahead of time. So we will start with some garlic and ginger. This is some shitty store-bought garlic. Why am I using it? Because I still have it, so I don't know. I just wanted to make sure that I use it before it goes bad. This is four cloves, which I think is excessive. Wow, look how shitty this is. Wow. Doesn't even smell fresh. What is this, imported garlic from shitland? Whatever, it's fine. For our purposes, who cares? For your purposes, use better garlic. And we will also use some ginger. I had this realization today that I think many people have had far, you know, long before I have, that YouTube is really dumb. It's just full of bullshit. I watched this cooking video where, I don't know, it, had, it has to have been like the 90,000th time that I've seen some, some cook say like, peel, peel the ginger with a spoon so you lose as little of the pulp as possible. It's like, well, you could do that, or you could use a f***ing peeler, which is designed for that job, and you don't lose anything when you use that. So, it's not, it's not a food hack, it's not a pro tip to use a spoon. You just, you just, I don't know, why? It's like telling people not to overbeat the eggs. Who's overbeating the eggs? You're solving a problem that doesn't exist. Is this like some bizarre algorithm thing that computers came up with? Like, oh man, spoon sales are down 23%. Let's 
Execute the ginger plan. I don't know. So fucking stupid. I. It's always like a, a chef that looks like they're a model. They're always like, you use a spoon to peel the ginger. No, use a peeler. It's, it's called a peeler because it peels things. Spoons are for spooning. All right, next up, we're gonna add some dark brown sugar. But you see how, how tall that looks? You pack it in. Wow, that's an actual quarter cup. So you always gotta pack that sugar. All right, uh, next up will be some soy sauce. You could use a liquid or a dry measure, it doesn't matter. Says some other person who's not me. All right, quarter cup. It's gonna be a lot of quarter cups. Okay, next up is some apple juice. I bought, I, this is the only apple juice Lucky sells. That's well, not the only one, but. I don't know, I was stuck in the conundrum of like, how do I get apple juice? But I don't really want that much apple juice. I really only need a quarter cup. Now I got this big old bottle of organic apple juice. I'm gonna have to find something to do with it. You want that apple juice? Yeah, okay. Problem solved. Okay, uh, now we're gonna add bourbon. That's right, bourbon goes in bourbon chicken this time doesn't have to but we're using ancient ancient age 10 quarter cup that was a heavy quarter cup it's fine okay so far so good what else do we need we need some rice vinegar just really a splash it's gonna be like a tablespoon that's a tablespoon and we're gonna add some red pepper flakes i grew these last year these are my, it's my homegrown cayenne we don't smell it because it makes me cough here's the old the old shits just a pinch of that give it a nice spice you should add more if you're using like store-bought red pepper, pepper flakes because they're way less spicy than that good good. Uh, it's not in the recipe I'm actually referencing that well, but I'm gonna add it anyways because I feel like it adds an air, an air, an air, A-I-R, an air of authenticity from mall food. I'm gonna put ketchup. That's right, we'll put some ketchup in the bitch. All right, there it is. Doesn't it look like garbage? And we will whisk to incorporate. You don't really gotta whisk it a ton, you just gotta mix it up. Honestly, right now it smells like bourbon and ketchup. <laughs> it's getting bourbon fumes up there. No problem. If this doesn't work out, I don't care. All right, so around now, if you didn't have a big old thing of cooked rice in your fridge, you would make rice. But we're gonna slum it tonight. We're gonna reheat rice that I cooked earlier today. Or maybe it was yesterday. I don't remember. But I also feel like that will add to the mall authenticity because you know that rice ain't fresh. This pan's looking pretty fucky because I'd be putting it in the dishwasher like I'm not supposed to. But, you know, if a vigorous rub doesn't get it off, then it won't impact the dish. All right, in a large pan. Heat it up. Heat up the air in the pan. That's what you gotta do. Meanwhile, while that's heating up, you need to chop your chicken. Now, I'll uh, address this right now. There's a lot of variations on this dish, and I think it actually is pretty common in the mall for them to serve this with chicken breast, which is actually pretty uncommon for this type of food because uh, chicken breast dries out pretty quick. It doesn't really take, you know, I don't really take that well to this type of cooking. So what I'm using is chicken thighs. Basically every food blog you'll read will say, use chicken thighs if you want it to taste good. Use chicken breast if you're worried about consuming fat. And so the choice was clear. Not too worried. Hakuna Matata, as it were. So I'm gonna chop this uh, two pounds of chicken thighs into bite-sized pieces. And you have yet another option to make this more unhealthy, which I am not opting for whatsoever, which is you could bread and deep fry the chicken. <laughs> no, we don't need that. Don't bother with that shit. Pay someone for that. Or just eat some general salads and you know, it's the same thing. So we'll be back after I chop this chicken. All right, in our hot pan, we're gonna add some oil, neutral oil, canola oil. Here's a pro tip. If you are reading a food blog, I'm shitting on all the fruit, the fruit blogs, the food blogs today. If you see one and it's a Asian recipe and they say use olive oil, hit the X button and shut down your computer. Like don't even bother, don't use olive oil for anything. It's my opinion. All right, working in smallish, smallish batches, we're gonna fry the chicken off. So basically, depending on how big of a pan you're using, just cover uh, cover the bottom of the pan. You can use relatively high heat. We're just trying to get it brown, not necessarily cooked. So I think I'm gonna have to do this in two batches based on how much chicken I'm using. So I'll show you what that looks like as we continue to progress. So you're just, you're just browning it off. 
Okay, so it took us two batches for chicken. We got a little bit of brown. Probably not as much as you might like, but it's fine. Everything's fine. All right, reducing the heat slightly to uh, about medium heat. Go ahead and pour your sauce in. It's weird to me this doesn't have sesame in it, but I, I guess it's not, you know, every other Chinese recipe, I don't know. Never mind. So here's our sauce. And actually, we're just gonna put all that chicken back in. Juice included, spread it out. And as we cook this, we're gonna need to like periodically move things around. And this is why chicken thigh is probably more desirable because if you cook chicken breast this way, it's probably gonna get dry and weird. But chicken thighs, you can cook them forever and they like, they always taste pretty good. So as this starts to come up to a boil, we're gonna like reduce the sauce down and it's gonna coat the chicken and it's gonna take about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna add some cornstarch at the end to thicken it up even more and get it sticky. And that'll be that. See, it's already it's already cooking down. It smells really good, but I still smell, smell bourbon and ketchup. <laughs> so does John, that's why he's laughing. I don't see how it could not be a success. You can take that to the bank or credit union. In the name of uh, recycling, we gotta get this plastic bottle into the recycling bin. We gotta finish the bottle. That's like such a dramatic pour for what is actually almost a reasonable serving of bourbon. Almost. And although I am a fan of this bourbon, I won't, I won't overstate its quality. So I am gonna put an ice cube in it, cool it down, and I'm gonna bless myself that I don't get a headache. We're truly trying times. Man, I love bourbon. And I love chicken too. We'll be back, I'll give you an update. All right, all right. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. Our bourbon chicken looks like bourbon chicken, defying my expectations of shittyocrity. Here in this little bowl, I'm getting some cornstarch. Cornstarch is the secret ingredient in all Chinese American food. I'm just kidding, it's not. It's not a secret to anybody. And we will add, that's a tablespoon of cornstarch. We're gonna add a tablespoon of water. We're gonna make a slurry. A slurry is a mixture of water and cornstarch. Duh, what else would it be? Be a little bit more water. And the reason you do this is to try to get rid of some of the clumps, the clumpiness, as it were, of this mixture. You can see it looks pretty good. Well, I mean, it, it looks not clumpy, and therefore it looks pretty good. And we'll put that into our glop. Shibbity boo, shibbity bop. We'll give it a mix. And just like that, just like that, faithful PGC viewer, you got a sticky sauce now. Ooh, that's thick. Ooh, that's sticky. And other things you don't want to hear me say. All right, you got a plate of rice. It's going in the microwave. And on this board, this clean cutting board, we've got some green onions, which I have washed while not being filmed. That's right, sometimes I do things we don't capture every single moment. And the food blogs say green parts only. You can do whatever you want. I like all parts of the green onion. They're all different shades of green, right? You got your dark green, you got your light green, and you got your white green. It's all green. Look at this, look at this. Oh, oh, that's, oh, man. Oh. Shit, that looks good. Doesn't that look good? I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna eat this food. Once it's thick and sticky, you don't even gotta eat it no more. It's ready to go. Rice is hot, obviously. That's kind of a lot of rice, but I don't care. Then, spoon it on over. Don't even have to worry about picking up the sauce because it sticks to the chicken. It's sticking to the chicken. And then, top it with a green onion, like so. It's a nice little garnish, and it's good to go. And somehow it still smells like bourbon, even though we cooked it. Most impressive. Let's sample our product. I'm gonna eat this piece of chicken right here. That's really good. It tastes comically like bourbon and ketchup, which we obviously used a lot of <laughs> in this dish. But also, it's so good. This has no business tasting as good as it does. This is just some really good food. Heck, you know, we cooked that chicken quite a while. We sauteed it, we cooked it in the sauce, and it's real tender. This is, this is, this is better than any like, bourbon chicken I've ever had. Which I haven't had that much. Be fair. Honestly, honestly make this. Like, I kind of was like hoping to shit on this dish and I can't. It's really good. I got Logan Robinson to thank. My, my sage wisdom for Logan Robinson and everyone who's requested a recipe 
And it might have been a while. Some of you have been waiting five years for some of your shit. Jalapeno poppers guy, for example. My wisdom is, good things come. And that's how you do it. God bless you and your family. See you next time. That's how you do it. I'm going to eat this chicken. And you can take that to the credit union. Happen on you. Oh, Goodbye.